بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome dear students this is Ms. Layla Jihani In شاء الله today we will continue our unit culture talk In شاء الله today we will cover unit uh, lesson 4 uh, language and context In our previous lesson we covered the grammar In the grammar we covered two points We um, learned how to use and form the infinitives in meaningful sentences also how to use gerunds uh, as a subject of a sentence okay inshallah today in our lesson language and context by the end of it you will be able to write full sentences to express local customs you will talk about local customs uh, in saudi arabia uh, before we start i give you homework page 124 and 125 we will go through the answers together. So we have exercise B, complete the paragraph with verb plus infinitive, okay? Um, use the simple past of the verb in the box and the infinitives in the parenthesis. So we have to use a verb from here. Uh, we will put it in the past tense and the verb between the brackets, we will use it as an infinitive, okay? Um, if you haven't done the homework, please pause the video and do it. I will just go through the answers, okay? So uh, the answers here, when I went to the United States last summer on a business trip, my five years old daughter and seven year old son asked me to take them. I wasn't sure about the idea. So in the beginning, I refused to take them. But they kept asking and they promised to be good. So finally, I decided to take them with me. I expected to do some work on the flight. But my children had other ideas. They ran up and down the airplane, hitting each other and making a lot of noise. I wasn't able to do any work and I was very angry with them. They really managed to upset me, but when they saw that I was upset, they remembered to be good for the rest of the trip. So it's a story. And we um, completed the story using the verbs and the infinitives. Now for exercise C, make the sentence use verb plus noun or a pronoun then the infinitive this is one of the forms we covered in our grammar lesson okay for example here they provided an example in england people expect so we have to form a sentence the sentence is in england people expect you to wait so expect you to wait here we have the verb here we have the pronoun to wait the infinitive in line for a bus. Look at the rest of the examples. If you haven't done it, please pause the video and do it. Try to form, uh, put the verb in the middle. Either you can put a noun or a pronoun, then use the infinitive, okay? Uh, let's see number one. Number one, in Japan, business people expect you to read their business cards. This is how we answer the first uh, exercise. Number two, in the United States, waiters expect you to tip after a meal, okay? Um, number three, my parents never allow us to eat dessert before dinner, okay? Number four, some business people learn English to do business in the United States. Five, in France, restaurants expect customers to eat the salad after the main course. Six, in India, hosts expect their guests to remove their shoes. This is how we answer this exercise. If you notice in this exercise, we have a lot of customs, a lot of traditions from different countries this is what we are gonna do inshallah in our lesson we will talk about some customs and we will compare it uh, to our um, uh, traditions our uh, uh, community okay 
Exercise D, complete the sentences. Use infinitives. So here we will use infinitives. Use its where necessary. Some sentences we will use its with it, okay? So it's wrong to expect here. This is the answer. They, we used its with um, to expect with the infinitive, okay? Look at the rest. Try to answer it and let's see the answers together. It's wrong to believe, number one, that only your culture does things the right way. صح? Number two, it's important to read about a place before you travel there. Number three, it's a good idea to learn a little of the language. Number four, it's advisable to look at what people from the country are doing and not doing. Five, it's rude to point at people in any country. Six, it's not polite to refuse an offer for coffee or tea from a business colleague. The last one, seven, it's a good idea to avoid jokes that people in other cultures might not understand. Okay, I want you to look at this exercise, exercise D. Look at the different things they advise, either to do or not to do, okay? Think about it. Does it um, have the same uh, thing here in Saudi? Should we do it, these uh, advices? Should we follow these advices or not? Like, for example, um, if you, it's advisable to look at what people from the country are doing and not doing. Do you think this is okay to look at people when they're doing things? Or we keep things uh, private? Do you think it's okay when you are with your family, sitting in a mall, and people are watching what, you, what exactly you're doing? I think some things we can agree to, and some things we disagree with, okay? Now here, exercise E, uh, page 125. Rewrite the sentences in D. So we have the sentences in D, exercise D, and we have to write it again. Make expressions of advice with infinitives. So we have to change it using the infinitives. Okay, given advice using the infinitives. Uh, let's see the answers. Number one, try not to believe that only your culture does things the right way. Number two, be sure to read about a place before you travel there. Three, try to learn a little of the language. Four, don't forget to look at what people from the country are doing and not doing. Five, try not to point at people in any country. We used the same sentences from the previous exercise, but we uh, wrote it using the infinitives. Six, try not to refuse an offer for coffee or tea from a business colleague. Seven, make sure to avoid jokes that people in other cultures might not understand. Okay, this is it for exercise E. Now for the last exercise here, uh, exercise F. A friend from the United States is going to visit you. Imagine, in your country, Write five expressions of advice. Give your friend who is coming to Saudi, give him or her an advice, okay? For your friend about your country and culture. Tell them how we are different than them, okay? Now let's see the answers here. Be sure to bring light clothes because it's very hot here in Saudi. Remember to say hello when you enter a store. Don't forget to change uh, the time on your watch to set, uh, set it as the time in Saudi. Make sure to try all the different kinds of food here. Be sure to have fun while you are here. This is uh, five advices for a friend who's coming to Saudi. Now moving on to our lesson. Okay, 
we have on page 62, we have language and context, okay? Discuss with the partner how people handle the following situations in your country. We have different situations. Discuss how people in our country handle these situations, okay? How do we deal with it? The first thing here, we have it as an example in our book, standing in line, people standing in line, okay? Do you think when you go to a mall, to a store, supermarket, when you go to the bank, when you go anywhere, do people stand in line or they gather around uh, the cashier or uh, any, the ticket box or whatever? Do we gather or we stand in line? Think about it. So the example here, we can see it in our book. Standing in line to catch a bus is common. Okay, what do you notice here? We started the sentence with what? Gerund, verb ing, it's a gerund, excellent. Here, it's a subject in the sentence, okay? What if we want to change it and we want to use the infinitive? How can we form it? We can say, it isn't common for people to stand in line to catch a bus, okay? This is uh, here in the first sentence we use gerunds. The second sentence we use infinitives. Do you remember the difference between the two? The difference is here we have gerunds, we have verb ing. With the infinitives we have to plus the verb. Verb, only the verb, nothing. Not in the past, nothing, only the base form of the verb. We don't add anything to it, okay? Like for example, learning English is fun. Or, it's fun to learn English. The first sentence we used, gerunds. The second one we used, excellent, infinitives. So here, the gerunds and infinitives, do we treat them as verbs? How do they work in the sentence? Do they work as the verb of the sentence? Can you find the verb here? The verb is, is, in green, this is the verb. What about the second one? Is, is the verb. So does the gerunds and infinitives work as verbs? No, they don't. They work as a noun. Either they can be the subject or an object in the sentence, as we covered in our grammar, okay? We have other situations, you can see it in your book, a list of uh, situations we already covered standing in line. Standing in line, we have it as an example. Let's take it one by one, okay? We have eating late at night. Do people in our country eat late at night? Do you say, can you say it's common or it isn't common? What do you think? Maybe you are in a house who eat early, they do, you don't eat late. So we can say, eating late at night is common. Or we can say, it isn't common for people to eat late at night. The first one we use gerunds, the second one we use the infinitive. Okay? Let's see the second situation. Tipping. Giving a tip, tipping, like when you go to a restaurant. Uh, and you finish your food, do you only pay for the food or you give extra money as a tip? Okay, do you think it's common or isn't common? So you can say tipping is common or you can say it isn't common for people to tip. Okay, uh, another situation here, we have taking a rest in the afternoon. In the afternoon, when you finish your lunch, do you take a rest? Think about the people around your family. Do they take a nap or they rest or they um, go outside and exercise or um, you take, so think about your house. Which one is applicable? Is it common or isn't common? So you can say, taking a rest in the afternoon is common. You can say that. The first one we used, the same, gerund. We can change it to an infinitive. We can say, it isn't common for people to take a rest 
in the afternoon. Either can be right. There is no right or wrong answer. You, the answer should be based on the people around you, okay? Your community. Now here we have shaking hands. They are shaking their hands. Do you think it's common for people to shake hands or it isn't common? Tell me. You can say shaking hands is common or it isn't common for people to shake hands. Okay? Another situation is take your shoes off in the house. When you go to your friend's house, do you take off your shoes or you uh, go inside the house wearing your shoes? It's different, I think, from um, not only country to a uh, country, it's, I think, from a house to a house. This is different, صح? So we can say, it is taking your shoes off in the house is common. Or you can say, it isn't common for people to take your shoes, uh, their shoes off in the house. Sorry, here we can, uh, it's not your, it's their. Okay, their shoes off in the house. Another situation here, we have arrive late. Do you think um, it is common for people to arrive late? Like when they, uh, at school, it is when you think about your school, do people or students come late? Teachers, do they come late? If they do, do you think it's okay or it's impolite? Um, do your uh, parents arrive to work late or they, want, they try to be on time? Also, when we pray, do we pray on time or we uh, pray late? We try to be on time for our prayers, صح? طيب, arriving late, do you think it's common or it isn't common? We can say, arriving late is common or it isn't common for people to arrive late. Both answers are correct. It depends on the situation around you. Here we have your idea. Write your ideas. What do you think? Think about other situations. I wrote here, bringing a wedding gift. When you go to a wedding, uh, do you bring a gift? Is it common to bring a gift? Or it isn't common? What do you think? You can say, it, uh, bringing a wedding gift is common. Or you can say, it isn't common for people to bring a wedding gift. Can you think about other situations and try to form sentences using it's common or it isn't common? Think about other situations like here I wrote bring in a wedding gift. Can you think about other situations? Like what? Think about it. Discuss it with your friends. Write your sentences. Another situation here, eating with your hands. Do you think people here eat with their hands or they use spoons? It's different, صح? You can say eating with your hands is common or you can say it isn't common for people to eat with their hands. Sorry. Eat, not eating. To eat with their hands. Okay? Another idea, praying. Praying. What do you think about praying? Here we can see Muslims praying. Do you think it's common? for people to pray or it isn't common? You can say praying five times a day is common, okay? Or you can say it isn't common for people to pray five times a day, okay? So it depends where you are. Like if you're in Saudi, you can say it's common. If you are uh, in another country, a non-Muslim country, you can say it isn't common for people to pray five times a day, okay? Uh, for your homework, please do page 126, okay? Uh, what did we cover in our lesson today? We wrote sentences, full sentences, to express local customs, the customs in Saudi, okay? Um, for the list of verbs for today's lesson, please open your books, page 82. We have three verbs. The first one is read. 
read, read. It's the same read, read, read. The pronunciation is different, but the writing, the, the spelling is the same. Okay, so in the present, you can say, Sami reads a book. In the past, Sami read a book. Okay? Um, and the present perfect, you can say, Sami has read a book. Okay? The third verb here we have, the second verb for today is ride, rode, ridden. Okay? I ride the camel. I rode the camel. I have ridden a camel. Okay? The last verb for today is run, ra ran, run. Okay? So he runs fast. He ran fast. He has run fast, okay? These are uh, the verbs and how we form it in sentences. Hopefully, this makes everything easier for you. That's it for today. Thank you for listening, and inshallah, I will see you next class.